Well, here we are again at the community garden. It is the 17th of August, so it's a couple of weeks on from the last time we were here. And uh, yeah, those uh, onions are getting bigger, and it looks like the bloody dock is <laughs> actually coming to something. Yeah. It's a slow grower anyway, but uh, yeah, so the Kelsey onions are <laughs> not as big as the giant show-stopping Kelsey's I've seen in other gardens, but they'll be very tasty nonetheless. And then we have a red wing red onion as well. So they're starting, just, just starting to flop over. And these are my Dutch shallots here the multipliers they're probably ready to come out and I have had a few out actually so the tropiana lungan uh, lunga they have all been taken out but three and my little tiny spring onions are coming along nice we've still got a few weeks I've taken all the peas away now because they're they're done get a little air in here a little sunshine and then we got our little bumblebees who really love our borage and who wouldn't love borage I know look see that's awesome very pretty okay so off we go past the parsley oh I've taken up these chives as well I just uh, kind of dig them out Pull them straight out of the ground. Are they ever delicious? Really, really good. And of course our carrots, a couple of them are going to seed, but those are the white ones. Um, oops, <sighs> goodbye wasp. Don't you dare sting me. Whoa. Ooh, that was close. Um, <clears throat> yes, so, and the leeks, still got another four weeks to go with those. I've taken out most of the auric and I've left this stuff to go to seed. You see how it is uh, very similar to uh, um, fat hen or uh, lamb's quarters, also known. And uh, you see the seeds, uh, they will flatten out. Very quinoa like, they're all relatives. So, back down to the cucumber trellises. We do have some cukes here, but they're coming along very slowly. But that's okay, we do a jar at a time. They're happy little marigolds. It's all good, and I have actually come here today to uh, take a little bit of dough home. Oh, look at these guys here. Yeah, that's the tiniest cucumber plant I've ever seen in my life. Nothing actually, I don't know why it's stunted like that, but it is. <laughs> anyway, so that's what's left of the rocket. I'm not really picking that anymore. We've got some nice little cukes here. That one's really taking off. We'll head over. I've uh, taken a couple of these cabbages out, actually three. This uh, integral red cabbage is just stunning. It's really juicy, crisp, um, and it is silver. It's got like a silver metallic finish to it. I've never seen anything like it in a garden before. And I took one of the um, Violacea um, de Veronas out because it just started to blow. Um, it might have been because we got a whole bunch of rain at one go, so it kind of split, but we caught it in time. And I've got some uh, lovely Brunswick out of here as well. The January King, uh, I'm just gonna leave for a little while because they are, as the name suggests, uh, last well into the autumn in early winter, if only we could do that here in zone four. But, anyway, the potatoes are pretty much as they were last time. Uh, hopefully they're doing something underground. There's the, uh, the Swede, or rutabaga, and the uh, kohlrabi's getting eaten by something, so that's okay, I guess. And then we've got this, uh, the next dill coming out. It should start to kick off next week, and then we'll get some nice baby dill. This is the new quinoa. You look at the psychedelic colors on those puppies. They're gorgeous. Sorry, red auric. They are related. Uh, the Kelkuv tronchuda has been eaten. And here are the new carrots. I'm really not sure how much we're going to get out of here, but there's some nice little spring onions there too. <clears throat> 
popping up all over the place. The beet seeds are been tied back because they were getting a little unruly. And they're hanging out nicely with the sweet peas, who still smell like roses. And then we've got lots of lovely beets to come, and beet tops, of course. So the pumpkins, the story's kind of changed here. I did have lots of the Rouge Vif de Tom, but it looks like we've only got two left. Um, the ones that did get to a considerable size just stopped growing and just started to rot, so I took them off the vine. No point wasting more time there. The yellow courgette is still kicking out some lovely fruits. And the Gallo Descent, which is actually here, has set its pumpkins at the back. And the Futsu Kurakawa, I can only find one. Now that things are starting to thin out a bit, um, you can see better uh, what's, what's under there. And you'll see there's some, there's one that's kind of rotting on the vine. Um, let's see if the Futsu is still there. Here's my, my little warty pumpkin. Just adorable. Yes, very, very lovely. Now let's see if we can find any more around here. There's another warty pumpkin. And it's at this stage that sometimes they just stop and uh, just start to rot. This is the uh, the Futsu, Kurokawa. Lots of male flowers. <coughs> Still. Bless them. And, uh, and there's my other rouge piece of town. So I've got two big Rouge Vif de Tam pumpkins, which I'm kind of happy about. So, yeah, that's all good. And the peas are done. Any peas left on there will be seed peas or compost. Yeah, we had a good haul, though. They were very, very nice. And so back down here to the other plots. Somebody, my next door neighbor, has been watering. That's good. Uh, it's been dry again. We did have some nice... Uh, Nice rain, but it all came at once, and then it's all gone now, so. Broad beans, I've been harvesting quite um, faithfully. Every day I come, I grab a few more, and we get, uh, we get, the Windsor broad beans are just the best. I mean, they, they just, they really are. They're just awesome. Those uh, black Russian ones, I don't think I'll bother with. This is the second year I've grown them, and they're tiny pods. They take forever. Yeah, oh, they taste nice, but they're small beans. And this is the celeriac. So we've got a couple here that are not too, not too bad. And I've been stripping the, the side shoots off them, kind of like that, to try and get it to concentrate a little bit more on the bulb. That looks like it's going to be a real beaut. Here's a nice one too. Let's see what we can there. Without making you dizzy. All right. And the lettuces, there. <laughs> they're pretty much done. I will be able to pick some of these Merlots. These new ones are strawberry cabbage lettuce, and they'll be fine. And I've got some new May Queen down at the end, which uh, will keep coming. So I'm glad about those. And these uh, purple beans, they need to be picked today. And uh, they're just so much easier to see than the green ones. Uh, yeah, sometimes these green ones get away on me. There we are. Yeah, and so the, the bean arch isn't doing too bad. Yeah. And uh, the potatoes. So we've had a few of the shepherdies out. <laughs> they're magnificent. Um, to really take the ball out, but they're just, they're fine here. Uh, these guys are the German Butterballs. These are Sean's favorite. He loves those. Um, <clears throat> these are the Purple Vikings, and when I lift some, when they're ready, I probably could now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave them. I will show you. They're just magnificent things. They're just so beautiful. And then here's my Rocos, and they're good faithfuls, and they store really, really well, and they're very prolific. Yep, and there's my my nasturtium craziness going on. Uh, they're not flowering at all, but the ones at the house are, so I guess that's the most important thing. So, that's another day at the garden. I'll grab my dill and head on home. Thanks for watching. Bye.